Hi there, good evening. We are in the thick of the 2022 legislative session for the General Assembly here in Richmond. And so I've been really busy, but wanting to give you an update on what I've been um, busy with and to make sure that you understood the work that was being done on your behalf. Um, and so each evening, I'm going to try and come in and give you an update uh, on the bills that I'm working on, but also other happenings around the Capitol and just things that I think you should know. Um, but this session, I introduced 25 bills that um, most came from constituent calls that I had and just really responding to the needs of what I heard during the campaign and really focusing the issues that you all said were most important to you. And I just continue to try to work with you to put forth policies that will make the Commonwealth stronger and more equitable for you. So last week I had House Bill 797, and this was a bill to clarify a previous bill that I had that went into law. The previous bill allowed for community service during incarceration to count toward your fees and fines. And then we found out that across the Commonwealth that was being implemented in way too many different ways, and we wanted to make it uniform. So House Bill 797 sought to do that. Um, it would have also allowed work during incarceration to count towards fees and fines. And unfortunately that bill died on a party line vote, um, but we will keep working to make sure that this law that is already in effect is available to as many people as possible. And we'll keep working to come back to make sure that we fix what needs to be fixed. This would have helped reduce the debt that individuals who are incarcerated um, have upon their release. And then, you know, just trying to help with the re-entry process. And House Bill 799 would have stopped collection fees while incarcerated. Yes, they are allowed legally to assess collection fees while someone is incarcerated. Um, so this would have stopped that and given them 90 days after their release in order to start making payments. Um, that bill also was killed on a party line vote. But this means with those two bills that the work that you do on the inside won't count towards your fees and fines in the same way. And they reserve the right to assess collection fees while someone is unable to work a decent wage to pay down their debt. So we're going to keep working on that. And then my bill, um, House Bill 810, was written with the Virginia Department of Emergency Management, and that was focused on streamlining federal and state reporting um, so that the requirements on localities were at the same time. It also allowed VDEM a little bit more time to analyze what was coming back from the localities so that they could assess the funding help that was needed, the planning help that was needed. And even though it was a totally nonpartisan bill, that bill was also killed on party line votes. Um, I also introduced quite a few budget amendments and we were able to present three and I presented one on um, suicide prevention, children's mental health and accessing services while they're in school, and then one that would bring funding to our beloved Brooks Crossing Center in Newport News. So that was last week. And then today we started off um, very bright and early at seven o'clock this morning uh, in the finance subcommittee. And that's where I had House Bill 1312. And that was about the earned income tax credit bill. And that would have basically helped low and moderate income families keep more of their tax refund, like money in your pocket. So this bill could have helped 600,000 taxpayers across the Commonwealth, specifically 10,300 in the 95th district. And so I thought it was a great idea. And though we keep hearing other people say that they want tax reform and tax relief for all, they continue to make policies that are really only giving tax relief to those that make more money, not those that make less. And it is proven that those with less and moderate incomes are actually taxed at a higher rate when you consider all of the taxes that you pay. And so we're gonna keep working um, to, to get to a more equitable tax policy. So shout out to the Fiscal Institute for their um, partnership and that um, also wanna double back. Shout out to everyone that I was working with, um, specifically Legal Aid Justice Center on the previous bills, those that um, spoke out on behalf of family and friends who are incarcerated and are continuing 
willing to work for economic justice, criminal justice reform, and everything in between. Um, and then also this morning, bright and early, I had House Joint Resolution um, 73, which is a proposal that I've put forth before. But JLARC is this entity that does comprehensive research on specific topics. And I'm asking for JLARC to do a comprehensive study on the impact of gun violence on the Commonwealth, the social, the physical health, mental health, economic, just what is the impact of gun violence on the Commonwealth? And so um, that is possible that they may take that up later this year. So stay tuned. And then um, my bill, House Bill 808, um, was heard after session today, and it came directly from a constituent. So basically, it would help employers be able to charge a smaller fee um, for withholding child support out of the check of an employee. Um, and that's really important when those fees start adding up. And that's money you could be spending on the kids as opposed to paying for fees when it really doesn't cost that much to take money out of your check. So, um, yeah, no matter the outcomes, though, I just want to let you know, I am remaining laser focused on working on the hard issues that you all brought to me and that I'm voicing on your behalf. These are hard hitting issues that affect the people of the 95th district um, across all spectrums. And so I continue to vow to be your voice in every meeting, every committee, every floor session, every floor speech, every single vote I take. I am here working for you. And so I um, if you want to stay tuned, you can follow my social media for more immediate updates, uh, ways to get involved, and just general updates on what's happening in other areas as well. And so tune in tomorrow for our next update, where I'll share more about some of the bills that we're voting on and things that are happening in the House. And as usual, you can leave comments in your questions or message us, and we'll get right back to you. Thank you. Talk to you soon.